We just got two new jumping spiders, so you know what that means. It's time for another enclosure battle. Hello everyone and welcome back to Spooder Pods. I'm David and I'm joined by my partner Sophie because we got two new jumping spiders. There'll be a video on that soon. I couldn't help, well we couldn't help <laughs> ourselves, so we thought we'd do another enclosure battle video. So to save some time, we've got our enclosures with the substrate already in, so you don't really need to hear about that. We basically used a nice bioactive substrate, added in some spring tails, and we're going to launch straight into our enclosure themes and then you guys can vote in the comments which one you prefer. Okay, so we've got my enclosure here. And here is a little selection of some of the things that I'm going to include. My spider is a male and he's a big manly warrior so he has his little princess castle in pink and purple um, and then we have his sort of uh, kingdom, we've got clouds and stuff. I was going to go for a rainbow theme, didn't really kind of work out but do you know what? This is his like kingdom, his castle and I really like it. Um, the castle is just like a rosewood aquarium thing. <laughs> and then we've got loads of bits from the bearded shrimp. Um, with the kind of uh, rainbow theme, I sort of went for like a pot of gold at the end. I don't know if it really, really works or not, but we've got mushrooms, we've got sticks and things, we've got a little bridge going into his little castle. We also have this as well. Uh, Trespassers will be eaten. That's from the Madhouse shop. So um, I don't know how I'm going to fit all of this into the enclosure, but the first thing I do need to do is to move um, this substrate out of the way because if you're ever putting um, something big at the bottom you want to make sure that it is not just sat on top of the soil you have to bury it to make sure it doesn't fall on any uh, animals or spiders in this case so let's get started with that now so this time me and Sophie are actually working in the same room because it's just easier and we don't even really know each other's theme we're not looking at each other's stuff but we are filming because it's much easier here is my selection of goodies I have loads of stuff here I'm going to give you a quick pan through before I put it all together. My theme is kind of a Studio Ghibli Enchanted Forest. So I've gone for some natural decor, I've gone for some artificial, I've gone for some all sorts of interesting things to add in. And my spider is a lady and she's basically going to be the guardian of this forest. And I've got a custom sign made from the Madhouse shop, which I want to highlight that because it's really cool with Spooder's Lair, very cute. And um, all sorts of other bits where I'll shout them out as I pop them in. So I'm going to get started and start putting things in while I hear Sophie's doing her castle in the background, I think, and see what we're going to get on with. So I have made an absolute mess of <laughs> substrate over because I'm trying to dig this castle in. I think it's looking really nice. Um, I've put a couple of these sort of fake trees there. I've also put a little branch at the back there just because it just helps with the kind of arborealness <laughs> of jumping spiders. It doesn't really fit with the theme, but you know, we have to accommodate what the animals actually need. Um, I've kind of, as I said, got soil everywhere, but you know, we'll, we'll beautify it later. Um, so just kind of tamped it down and then I think we're going to go in with like a little bridge. I'm going to make that look nice in a second and then I'm going to get this and again make sure it's stuck in the substrate um, nice and safely so it's not going to fall but our jumpers love to bask on their signs which is adorable so we've got to make sure there's one in there and I think this really fits really well with the castle theme of my jumping spiders sort of little uh, kingdom and how trespassers will be eaten. So the very first thing I want to put in in the back is like some hanging ivy leaf. I got this from Amy's Wonderland UK on Etsy. Uh, very happy with a lot of the bits I got from her. And you will see a lot of these natural sort of shelves and woodland bits are from there. Also got stuff from Bearded Shrimp. Obviously the Madhouse shop with the sign. And we've got the Spooder Corner as well. We've got these lovely Kodama. So loads of great Etsy sellers, which I will leave a link for in the description for all of them. Because I think they're all awesome and have lots of goodies. So now we've got our ivy in, the next thing I want to do is kind of add a bit more natural elements. So I've got this lovely sort of branch arc, which I thought would be kind of cool for our spoo to climb on. And it's going to sit in that substrate quite neatly and make sure it's buried in a little bit so it actually stays where it's supposed to be. Sorry, Mr. Springtail. And then Tank really likes it in his enclosure, so I'm going to have a sort of log at the front because he's, uh, he tends to like to sit and bask on there. So I'm hoping our new female jumper is going to be similar. So I'm going to keep on focusing on the ground level for now. So next thing I'm going to pop in is my kind of centerpiece flower, which is where all the Kadama and the other animal, well, creatures of the forest are going to be protecting. I think it's really cute. I'll put a shout out as well for that one because it's a lovely thing. A bit more smaller than I hoped for, but very beautiful. Then next, we'll just need our warning sign. I'm going to have it off to the side as well because I think it looks quite cool there. So already I think it looks quite cool, although it's probably just my opinion that you guys may have a different one. But then let's see what Sophie's getting up to right now. 
Right, so we've made some progress here. So we've got the sign buried in now, added a little bit of extra substrate just to make sure it's secure. We've got the bridge, we've got a little um, mushroom toadstool situation going on there, the little sort of guardians of the castle. Um, I've also put the cauldron in with the gold bubbles. I'm not so sure about this um, kind of red spood tube. I can't decide if I want it in here or not, or maybe use it in a different enclosure, because I just feel like maybe I should have gone for pastel colours all over, so I may take that out. Um, but I've just got some more platforms, feeding dish, um, and kind of shelves to go in. So I'm just going to have a little play around with that and then I think be about done, to be honest. So next up for mine, I want to put my little Kodama spirits in. Uh, so we need to find little spots for him. This little guy, let's bury him in a little bit so he rests on there, he's going to be there. I'm going to have another one over here. I don't really mind them being partially buried because I think they look quite cute that way. And then this little fella, to sit. Just go on burying in the wall next to pot. I've got some little mini ones as well, little sprites, so I'm gonna pop them in. No. As well. I think I only use a couple of them so I don't want it to get too crowded and these guys are gonna fall over anyway. They will glow in the dark. Which will be interesting. And then I'll have a couple of mushrooms as well. Which I'll pop in and then show you. Right, and then ta-da, we now have our ground floor populated. We have our Kadama spirits, we have our little sprites, we have a little well and a hidden mysterious pond at the back. And I think I'm ready to move on to the top and making sure that my spider has lots of places to hide and have fun in. Now because I'm going for a generally more natural look, with obviously the bioactive substrate, spring tiles and the like, but I want things to look more natural. So I've got some natural wooden um, sort of like ledges and also a silk hide rather than the usual plastic one and I'm going to pop those ledges in now one thing I am going to pop in is this feeding dish by the bearded shrimp it may not look very natural however I find that all of our like feedbus regions benefit from this because if we leave in a bit of food for them to snack naturally on they hunt it and if they decide not to hunt it then we can always pop it in a dish and they can have it later it makes it so much easier to feed that way so you can sort of have a choice between feeding naturally or letting them just get it from a dish and it just makes things a lot easier and make sure they're eating when we feel they need to. So here we have it, we have our feeding dish now in position, we have our natural wooden ledges. I've tried to, well actually this needs one needs to be repositioned slightly, just move it like that. So try to position them so the spood will have different levels it can explore, different places it can sit on, nice high up places it can relax on and sit as well and just give loads of options. There's only one last thing I want to add into this and then I'm pretty much done and I'm going to pass back to Sophie. And just like that, I'd say we are done. So what I've done is added in these cute little sort of log platforms as like a little staircase. We've got the blue cloud at the back, lots of arboreal enrichments. We've got um, this daisy was actually from Tank's enclosure, our other jumping spider. He has never used it because he has loads of other toys because all of our spiders are spoiled. So I thought, you know what, this could be for uh, one of our newbies. Uh, hopefully he'll like it too. And we've got the little sort of um, leaf shelf. Then we've got the feeding dish as well, which is super important. Um, and it's all kind of come together really nicely, so I'm really excited to see what my new spider thinks of it. Um, the only thing I didn't put in was the red spoon tube, not because there's anything wrong with it, you can see the mess I've made it. Um, just the colour, just doesn't really go. Um, we've really gone for a beautiful sort of pastel-y, lovely kind of fairy tale theme here, so I just thought if that was in a different colour I might have used it, but he's got plenty of places to hide. Uh, Blossom loves being in the sort of cauldron thing, so he's got options and it'll be absolutely fine. So here we have it. I moved one of the shelves over and I put this lovely sort of natural, well, it's nice blue coloured, very light blue coloured, because I thought that fit with the theme, woven rope for my spider to climb across and hunt, which leads from one end of the enclosure to the other. And that's basically done. There were a few things I didn't include because I didn't think they'll be worth it and make it too busy, but we can always save them for other enclosures. But here's my finished enclosure. I'm hoping my new spider is going to like it. And what we're going to do, me and so we're going to compare notes briefly and let you guys decide. So here we have both enclosures side by side. There's mine there. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see it clearly. And then there's Sophie. Honestly, in my opinion, I think they both look really cool and very interesting. I think mine's got a few more options to climb across, but Sophie's got just that beauty factor to it and lots more sort of higher up options. Obviously, we'll see how our spiders settle into these and we'll adapt if we need to to make sure that they're both going to be really happy.
So guys, that brings us to the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed seeing both of our enclosure build offs. So make sure you vote in the comments whose you prefer. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to vote. Um, it's all a bit of fun. You know, we both like each other's enclosures. They came across really well. The spiders seem to be settling in very well to them. And we'll obviously update you on the channel about how things are going on. But in the meantime, from me and Sophie and our new spiders, hope you're having a great day. Take care and see you later.